Remember Elon Musk's Starlink project? A few months ago, back in May, we took a close look at the satellite program that's supposed to create a global high-speed internet network. Since then, SpaceX founder Musk and his Starlink crew have worked diligently to send more and more satellites into low Earth orbit. With the latest launch in October 2020, Starlink is almost ready for a broadband public beta. Reason enough to give you an update on what's going on at SpaceX. One, two, three, four. If you haven't seen our former Starlink video, you can check it out here. But I'll give you a quick summary anyway. Since 2015, Elon Musk has been working towards creating a global broadband internet network. To achieve this, his company SpaceX is building satellites and shooting them up into the sky. Into low Earth orbit, to be precise. Their goal is to have between 12,000 and 42,000 orbiting satellites that communicate with antennas on Earth and beam data from one point to another. Musk claims that with Starlink, he will be able to bring high-speed internet to the most remote areas of the world. When we told you about Starlink five months ago, SpaceX had launched about 400 satellites. By now, they've almost doubled the amount. So, let's see where we're currently at. How soon will Starlink be ready? What problems is the project facing? And will Starlink replace traditional internet providers? Let's find out. The answer is probably soon. SpaceX has been running a private beta since July in parts of the northern US. However, the private beta was pretty much limited to SpaceX employees. But some emergency services were also lucky enough to try it out. The Washington State Military's Emergency Management Unit, for example. They have been using seven Starlink end-user terminals for connectivity since early August. They used them especially in fire-ravaged parts of the state, such as Malden, a small town with only about 200 inhabitants. This trial definitely shows how Starlink is supposed to work best in rural areas where internet connectivity is slow or even unavailable. But now, with the latest launch of 60 satellites in October 2020, a public beta is very much in sight. Musk himself tweeted that once these satellites reach their target position, we will be able to roll out a fairly wide public beta in the northern US and hopefully southern Canada. Musk did not specify an exact date but experts estimate that it might be as early as February 2021. SpaceX will keep sending packages of 60 satellites each into space. And with every launch, the usable bandwidth will be improved by one terabyte, according to Musk. Musk also claims that Starlink will be economically viable once they have around 1,000 satellites up and running. The biggest issue that Starlink has been dealing with are the environmental concerns. Many experts worry about the space debris that thousands of satellites would cause. And it makes sense. In January 2020, many miles above Pittsburgh, a decommissioned telescope and a defunct military satellite missed each other only by roughly 50 feet. Just a few months later, a Russian frigate rocket blew up hundreds of miles above the Indian Ocean. SpaceX has addressed these concerns and claims that the Starlink satellites are programmed in a way that will make them burn up entirely if they reach the Earth's atmosphere. And SpaceX has demonstrated this a few times, but we don't know for sure what happens when the satellites crash in space. According to NASA, space debris is the number one threat to spacecraft, satellites and astronauts. In space, a 5 cm projectile packs the same punch as 1.8 kg of TNT on Earth. Are you also skeptical when it comes to space debris and the environmental issues Starlink is facing? What are your concerns? Let us know in the comments below. Not in the very near future, at least. Yes, SpaceX will be doing a public beta soon, but they're still pretty far away from what they're aiming for. Ultimately, the satellites are supposed to communicate via lasers with each other. But none of the satellites currently in space is equipped with such a device. Without lasers, every connection to a Starlink satellite needs to go through a ground station. That means if there is no ground station within reach of the satellite you're trying to connect to, there is no coverage. And then there's the question of whether Musk and Starlink will be allowed to offer their internet everywhere. So far, they've only been successful in getting regulatory permission from authorities in the US, Canada and Australia. But even then, the next question is, what would these permissions look like? 
As of today, the FCC has allowed the use of 1 million antennas in the US. That might sound like a lot, but in reality, every household that wants to connect to the Starlink network needs their own antenna. That means Starlink only has a permit to provide its service to 0.8% of all households in the US. So that's not much. Musk has said that Starlink is not supposed to operate in urban areas and that he doesn't see this project as a replacement for traditional telecommunication providers. But of course, who knows what happens once Starlink's internet is up and running? SpaceX officials have said Starlink services will cost about 80 euros a month in the beginning. Not cheap. But if SpaceX keeps its promise regarding speed and latency, public demand for Starlink might increase soon enough. And then Musk could try to make it accessible even for people in more densely populated regions. What do you think? Would you be interested in trying Starlink satellite internet? Leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you next time. Bye.